Hello folks, want to see how to use a SharePoint list and Microsoft Forms and Power Automate together to create data on that SharePoint list? Well, if that's the case, you're in the right spot and let's see how we do this and the situation that I come up for it. Before we begin, if you are interested in learning more about the Power Platform, please go to prag.work slash map40 where you will get 40% off our on-demand learning subscription, which has access to over 100 different courses. Let's get on to the video. All right, so here's what we're going to do in this episode. If you watched the last episode, you saw that we did a Power Automate to send emails out to our students whenever it was their birthday. Uh, so if you're interested in learning how to do that, take a look at the last episode. And this one, I teased it at the end of the last video of saying, well, we got the data, but what if I don't want to put in all the data for my students and their birthdays to get this email reminder to, to work for us? I said, well, we could use Power Automate to actually get the data put in without us doing any of the work. And that's what we're going to do. And we're going to do that with a Microsoft form here. So the first thing we're going to do is take a look at the SharePoint list. If you didn't watch the last episode, I've got a title column for the student, a birthday column that has the date and then their email address. Well, now what I want to do is create the entry area for the data itself. And I'm going to use the Microsoft Forms program to do this. So I'm over here at Forms and I'm going to create a new form. Now this form, I'm going to give it a name here. I'm going to call it my uh, birthday entries, so birthday entries for students. And then I'm just going to start to build out some areas for my parents and students to interact with. So the first thing is I need a text area. And the question, so to speak, is I want them to type in the student name. Then the next thing I want to add on to my SharePoint list is a date. So I'm going to use a date question here where I'm going to ask them for the student's birth date. So birth date. And then finally, in order to send out my email, I need to capture that email address on the SharePoint list as well. I'm going to add in a text question and ask them for the student email. The form is now done. Simple as that because obviously I'm only collecting three pieces of information. But if you've never used forms before, they have a lot of great purposes. I like forms easy to set up and create. If you want to go more, you know, uh, in depth with it, you're typically going to go with the power application. But for us educators, forms are an awesome thing to utilize. Now we're going to see how we can incorporate the form with the Power Automate flow to write the data for us. So the form is now done. Let's head on over to Power Automate. And I'm going to come on over to my create section. And from the create section, I need to choose the type of flow that I want to work with. Uh, and in my case, I want to use an automated cloud flow. And what the automated cloud flow means is it's going to monitor a data source for some type of event to occur. So I'm going to give my flow a name to start off with. I usually like to use the data source I'm using first. So Microsoft form, I'm then going to put in new response and I'm just going to say write to SharePoint. Then I need to choose my trigger. And this is a very common one. It's right up here at the top when a new response is submitted. So I'll select it. And then I'll hit create here. And now where I'm at, I'm in the modern designer of Power Automate. Uh, now, if you're more familiar with the classic designer, you can flip that toggle switch and go to the classic designer, but I'm going to showcase the modern designer here. And the first thing I want to do is I want to modify or actually set up the trigger itself. So the trigger is when a new form response is submitted. So in order to, you can even see it says invalid parameters, meaning I haven't put in the information yet. So I click on my trigger here. And it says I first need to pick the form that is going to trigger this flow. So if you have multiple forms in here, so I have this uh, right here, birthday entries for students. So I'm going to select that one. Then I also like to put in some context to the triggers and the actions. So I'm going to put a dash here and say new birthday entry. All right, and I just do that for context so I can keep track of what everything is doing on its own. So this is going to trigger it, but unfortunately, it doesn't bring back the values right away for me. So we have to add an action to get those details from the form response. So I'm going to collapse this over here. I can get rid of Copilot for now. And I'm going to click on the plus sign so that I can add an action in. So the action is dealing with forms. Now, whenever you're using Power Automate after this, if you're newer to it, if you're not sure what the action name is or what even actions are supported with your data source, an easy idea is to go search for it. So for example, if I'm like, I don't know what forms can do, I can search for forms and then it's going to give me the popular actions at the top. 
And then if I wanna see if there's any more action supported with it, I click on see more. And with forms, there's only one thing, it's to get the details from that response. And that's exactly what we want here. So I'm gonna choose get response details. And again, I'd like to do my naming conventions here. So I'm gonna put in that nice dash and saying getting birthday entry responses. Then it's gonna say, well, what form am I supposed to be looking at? Well, mine is called the birthday entries for students. So I'm gonna choose it. Then it's gonna say, well, which form response do you want? Because every form that gets a response has an ID associated with it. And it's always gonna be different based on when it was, you know, the different entries that there were. However, if we click on our little lightning bolt here for the dynamic content, the ID is the ID that was collected during the trigger process. So that is the response ID that I need here. So I now have the trigger, it says, okay, I'll run the flow. The second part is I'm now gonna get the details from that form response. Now we move into our third action, which is we wanna write this data to our SharePoint list. So I'm gonna click on the add step here and I'm gonna add in an action. Now the action that I wanna do here, again, it's SharePoint. I'm not quite sure what SharePoint can do. Again, I can search for SharePoint. This is a great way just to explore as well. Cause you might be doing one thing, but you don't know that there's other options you could be doing with your data source. So if I click on see more, look at all the different things we can do with Power Automate and SharePoint. What we want is this create item action. So I'm gonna click on create item. And then I'm gonna rename it here. I'm gonna say making entry to the SharePoint birthday list. All right. Then I pointed into my SharePoint site address. So mine is called this one right here. And then I pointed into my list name. And so my list name, I called it student birthdays. So that's where we're starting off with. Now I need to write to those columns, but I don't see any of the columns here, even though I know they exist on the SharePoint list. Well, right next to advanced parameters, you can choose one at a time or if you just wanna see all of them, which is what I like to do, I'm just gonna click on show all. So my title column is storing the name of the actual student. So what I need to write to the title is the student name from the response. So I come on over here to dynamic content, right under here, get response details, student name, bingo. That's what I want. Now I'll set on over here to birthday. I'll hit my dynamic content again go to the student's birth date. Then to the student email, hit the dynamic content and I choose my student email. So I now have officially mapped all of those record values that have been returned and I'm mapping them to these columns to write it to the SharePoint list. So there's only one extra thing to do here to make sure this works and that is to actually test the flow out. So the way that we test the flow is we first have to save our flow and then after that flow is saved, we can manually test it. Now by default, once you save, it is on, but you don't wanna just assume that it's going to work. So we typically like to test right here from the designer. So I'm gonna choose test and I'm gonna do manual here as it goes through the testing process. All right, so I'll hit manually. I will then come on down and click on test. It says to see it work now, perform the starting action. All right, well, I will definitely do that. So I'm gonna come on over here to the form and I'm gonna preview my form so I can enter something in. So I'm gonna put in a student name here. Uh, so I will go with today, uh, Sarah Reber. I'll pick a birth date. Again, I'm not gonna go try to find one back in the day, so I'll just say uh, April 1st. And then I put in a student email, and I'll just say Sarah is the best at gmail.com. And then I'm gonna click submit here. So the response has been submitted. So now what should happen when I come on over to Power Automate, it says your flow is running. So that part's good. And I get all these green checks. So we can't go, can't jump for joy just yet, just cause you have green checks. It says all the actions you set up did get executed, but did they execute the way in which we hope they did? Well, let's come on over and find out. So I'm gonna come on over here into my SharePoint list. And what do we know? There is Sarah, the date that I chose, and that student email. So now with this power, we don't have to create the data. We are letting our parents do it for us. 
And now again, you could take this even further that after the response has been submitted, we could send an email back to the parent saying, can you validate that this is correct? If they click yes, then we go and actually write the data. If they say no, we take them back to the form and we say, please fill this information out again. And then we ask them for another approval there. And that's using what are called approval flows, which is definitely something we'll be covering in one of our future episodes. So hopefully you enjoyed. This is Power Platform for Educators. The goal of this series again, and hopefully if you've watched the other ones you've been enjoying, is to help educators learn the powers of, ah, oh, that's so corny, uh, to learn what the Power Platform can do for you with some easy demonstrations that you can automatically just start putting into the classroom. And then if you get really excited about learning all this material, well, there's a whole nother world out there where you can get into the Power Platform. Not that I want to take you away from the education world, but that's what happened to me. I learned about the Power Platform, started training here, which I love. Uh, but as I learned about it, I was like, I definitely need to help out educators and figure out how they can do this at their side. So hopefully you enjoyed. And if that is the case, make sure to like and subscribe down at the bottom here. And if you also enjoyed, I'll be seeing you in future videos. Thanks so much.